when right- let me probably turn the audio on you know what really sucks about this interview is she, i guess it's because she's in australia but it's like this mainstream media outlet like dressed up multi-billion dollar studio interview and this shit is always so dis- disingenuous it doesn't even matter how honest it appears it's just so disingenuous you know what i'm saying like that it like i can never believe anything that is this dressed up it like professional everybody's got their business suits on everybody's dressed up everybody's got their mics on everybody's got their green screen and the graphics on i'm like this is fucking lame it just doesn't feel real shit sorry no cap on god skibbity doo wop rachel gunn took to the breaking arena at the paris olympics she beamed with pride completely decked out in aussie green and gold but her moment in the international spotlight quickly turned dark with a global pylon, a ferocious backlash, she's still struggling to understand. What? <laughs> I can't understand what happened. <laughs> Look, I'm struggling to understand what happened. You know, it's been a month now since I went up on stage with zero prep and flopped around like a sizzling piece of bacon with no soul and no life, like a stripper in the bad part of Alabama. That all you have to pay her is a half-eaten lollipop to get her to dance on your face with no undies on. And you're surprised. <laughs> I just can't, I can't explain where all this hate is going. <laughs> this, is, this is dumb as hell. God. Jeez. Look at me. Not even on the right window. And recover from. Representing yeah. Australia, Ray Gunn. Viewers questioned why she was chosen. Yes, Rachel didn't get a point. <laughs> Oh, this is already so funny. Viewers are confused why she was chosen as she's over there blobbing around. Oh, can I just point out the fact that she's a 36-year-old white lady? That like think about this for a moment. Shouldn't every single person in the Olympics in this kind of highly physical activity be 20 to 28? <laughs> Maybe. No, nah, she's like an old lady. I'm so surprised as to why she did not get gold medals on her face. You've seen you know the one I'm talking yeah. about. The athlete from down under that everyone is talking about and sure to be this year's most popular Halloween costume. She shared some true Aussie spirit. Of course, she had a crack. My gun had a crack. How are you feeling since your performance? Did anyone see the break dancing lady? It was so funny. It was very cringy. Cringy, yeah. She is the best break dancer female that we have for Australia. Why would you say that? God, imagine being Australian. My dumb ass would be out of left. Out of left. I'd have packed my bags. I'd put my kangaroo in my, in my whatever that shit, Vegemite, in my briefcase. And I'd have left. I'd have left immediately. This is all you have to offer? Holy hell, look at her. She looks like she just fell over. This looks like a blooper. She's dead right now. God, man. Obviously hurting it. I feel sorry for the athlete, and that should not happen in our world. She feels, why are these people attacking me based on falsehood and mistruth? It's frankly been pretty devastating. Everybody in the crowd! Rega, thanks very much for joining us. How are you doing? Yeah, it's it's been a pretty wild ride. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, I definitely have my ups and downs, my my good and bad days, but it has been honestly so amazing to see the positive response uh, to my performance. Like I never- Look, I'll be completely transparent with you right now. 99% of the people that are being positive are making fun of you or they're doing it the same way that attractive women call like ugly fat women beautiful to keep you in a place of despair so you can't raise yourself out and be competitive against them anymore people are making fun of your ass there is no one that's like oh Bob, you did so great they're saying that to either a appear morally superior or b to not get fired you'll notice everybody giving her props is like Oh, the vice president of this company is saying she was real brave. It's never like a normal ass dude like Matthew McConaughey. (laughs) She wasn't all right, all right, all right. She was all bad, all bad, all bad. (laughs) Never thought that I would be able to, to connect with so many people in such a positive way. So that has been just so amazing. But 
yeah, it, it, it definitely has been tough at times. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I can well imagine. How, how dark? I can well imagine. You know, this guy knows for a fact that when he's behind closed doors and he watched her her performance, he spit out his freaking whiskey and laughed his ass off, and him and his friends made fun of it. But now he's on TV, and he's got to be like, oh, yeah, I can really imagine. I can imagine you went through it, so, and we care about you so much. Please, God, don't fire me, please. That's what he's thinking. Please don't fire me, please. I think you're so great, but behind closed doors, you guys ever seen that uh, That dude, uh, what was it? It was the Veritas guy. He would go undercover and interview these people that would just talk major shit on all these people. And the people talking major shit are the same people that are over here um, speaking all these like absolute moral truths on social media and how good of a person they are. But then behind closed doors are assholes. Yeah, this guy definitely is one of those guys. Did it get for you? Fortunately, I, I got some mental health support pretty quickly, and I also went off social media. I went off the internet, but it's pretty up and down, but it's also just hard to process it all, honestly. Like, it's just still pretty hard to process. This became such a global storm. How much of it were you aware of? Not a lot, actually, because as soon as I finished, you know, my rounds, I... Um, my media liaison from the AOC said, oh, there's a bit of a storm brewing on social media. You might want to go off socials. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't understand the scale of it. And then I did, you know, preview some comments and I was like, oh, no. And I, don't, I have this kind of sick feeling started, started coming out. I was like, oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah, no shit. No shit. Wh how would I feel? Okay, if for some odd reason this was applicable and something that could actually happen, how do you think I would expect the reaction to be if I went and raced in Formula One and I was in, you know, a Red Bull car and I was going, we went green and I just went 20 miles an hour for like 20 laps and, you know, caused a big wreck and killed two people. How would I expect the social media backlash to be? Would I expect it's positive? Like her happy ass watched the people live in front of her doing their uh, bits, doing their routines, and she didn't realize immediately <laughs> that there was definitely going to be some backlash. What the absolute hell was she thinking, dude? What, what has happened? The immediate aftermath must have been hard. I mean, there's that famous footage of Australian journalists running after you while you're walking down the street. Have you got a message for the people who've been writing stuff online, guys? It must have been unlike anything you've ever experienced you before. people have been unfair about your performance? What was that moment like? Look at her pretending she's on the phone. This is her first time. Her, uh, I don't know if that's her husband. God, that was an awful looking man. That's sad. That was really wild. So that was the next day. I was actually calling my media liaison going, these people are chasing me, what do I do? Um, but that really did put me in a state of, of panic for, for a while after that. And I was quite nervous being out in public because I just didn't know what was safe, if anyone was going to recognise me, if, you know... It, how they were going to respond to seeing me and and it was it was pretty nerve-wracking for a while there yeah i think the moment my plan to become ultra famous and get a free vacation to paris totally worked and i was so surprised that i was panicking like come on bro come on bro you kidding me <laughs> this was she quite literally used this entire thing to get a free vacation and to go out there and steal a spot for somebody that was actually qualified to be there. And she's like, oh, it was so crazy. I was getting followed around everywhere. It was so crazy. She does, You're going to notice immediately she, she does a lot of humble bragging in this interview. Like she's she totally 100% thinks that she's hot shit. 100%. Where I thought, okay, this is wild. This is now out of control was when I saw the, the sketch on Jimmy Fallon. And it's just like, Wow. You have to wonder where Ray Gun is right now. Where's that music coming from? What was going through your mind when that happened? Uh, mixed emotions, I think. Like, I don't know whether to, like, hug him or yell at him because <laughs> what a platform he ended up giving me. Like, 
Keep in mind, she's like, I have mixed emotions. I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest. And then claims that she actually hasn't seen it. Which, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. My hairy asshole. If Jimmy, Fa if, I, if somebody tweeted at me and said, bro, Jimmy Fallon just did a bit making fun of you. I would pull that shit up so fast. And probably laugh at it, to be honest. Even though Jimmy Fallon's horribly unfunny. But he's slightly funnier than Jimmy Kimmel. So, like, Honestly, um, I haven't actually seen the sketch because I don't think I'm in a place yet to watch it, but I will watch it at some point. And, you know, a few different... Oh, dude, uh, uh, dude middle-aged white women love to talk about their mental health. Woo! I'm just not in a place. I've had to have a mental health crisis and go talk to people and stuff because I just can't handle that my scam actually worked. There's always this underlying tone about how I'm a victim, right? You always have to leave like this weird back door open to I'm a victim and I'm a victim and I have a, you know, I'm a victim and I'm a victim. And there's, you know, there's possible things that could be happening where I'm a victim. And, you know, there's always like this out, you know, where you can pretty much there, there you have no accountability for any situation because, oh, mental health and I'm a victim. You know what I'm saying? People have, have kind of explained it to me and given me different takes on it. But, I'm still in the process of being able to describe how I feel about all this stuff because it kind of feels like a really weird dream that I've been having that I'm going to wake up from at any moment. Like, what is life right now? <laughs> what about the performance itself? Have you watched that back? I haven't watched it back, no. <laughs> That's not unusual for me, though. I'm, I'm not great at watching back my, my battles. Um, immediate, well, it's been a month, Rachel. Um, <laughs> it's still going to take me some time. Oh, my God, dude. She speaks to herself in third person. Oh, fuck. This sucks. <laughs> fuck. This is rough, dude. I think. Um, I think I've seen little bits and pieces. Um, but, yeah, I, I'll watch it eventually. You eventually did speak out about the backlash to your performance on a social media post. I'm glad I was able to bring some joy into your lives. That's what I hoped. Um, I didn't realize that that would also open the door to so much hate. What did you have in mind there? It, it was really sad how much um, hate that it, it did evoke. And a lot of the responses, though, is also just due to people. Yeah, yeah, it's great. There's a great one right there. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Not being very familiar with. Yeah, right here. I'm more concerned with who qualified or these people should be fired. 100%. 100%. Breaking and the diversity of approaches in breaking. And it was so fantastic that the next day, the judging chair, MG, came out and explained that, you know, in the breaking community, what I did actually wasn't very shocking. You know, it love it. I just love this. It's like, ah, you know, actually what I did was really awesome. And uh, you just don't get it because you're not in the community. Even the even the judge said she was badass, even though she got zero points. But, uh, you know, even the judge said she's badass. The more artistic, you know, uh, awful responses, not only attacking me, but attacking my husband, attacking my crew, attacking the breaking and street dance community in Australia, my family, the energy and vitriol that people had was um, pretty alarming. You can tell she wants these people arrested. I mean, she's in Australia. Right? In the aftermath of your performance, it got pretty wild, actually. There were all kinds of conspiracy theories going on. Gunn, who set up her own governing body for breakdancing, has manipulated the selection process. Ray Gunn's husband was the judge that got her through. The coach of the My favorite part about this is all of these people, you know, have all these accusations and allegations that she set all this up. And then she's like, no, I didn't. The national team and the team select. Unsurprisingly, they run a qualifier that gets 15 entrants and Ray Gunn is selected. An online petition gathered more than 50,000 signatures questioning her selection and calling for an investigation. Yeah. How did you feel when you saw those? Yeah, the the conspiracy theories were just awful. Um, that was That was really, that was upsetting because it, it wasn't just people that, you know, didn't understand breaking and, and were just angry um, about my performance. It was people that are now attacking our, you know, our reputation and our integrity. And look, you know, none of them were, um, 
grounded in any kind of facts. And obviously, you know, they're still circulating. People still don't <laughs> believe the truth, Sorry. but we do live in a different world now. So I think that's just going to be part of, you know, our reality, unfortunately. That misinformation has been addressed by the AOC, by Ausbreaking, by the World Dance Sport Federation. But <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, the AOC and the Olympic Committee have launched an investigation into ourselves, and we have found out that we did nothing wrong, which is basically what happens here. <laughs> the allegations that we did the thing, we've investigated, and we deter determined that we didn't actually do the thing, so it's all fine. I can't believe Australia themselves uh, wouldn't admit to completely rigging something. That would definitely not make the country look terrible or anything. Let's hear it from you. How did you qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympics? <laughs> oh my God! Did you see? Oh, I can't even. I can't even. This is. I can't take this seriously. She literally sat there for <laughs> five seconds and looked around. Oh shit! <laughs> that says it all, folks. <laughs> She literally was quiet. <laughs> oh, shit. What did he just ask me? Oh, my God. Let's go back. We're going to do it again. We got to see that again. You. How did you qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympics? I won the Oceania Championships. <laughs> she won the... Look at her biting her lip. <laughs> oh, my God. This is the greatest... Oh, this is the greatest shit I've ever seen in my life. Wow. Oh, man, this is crazy. <laughs> she said it with a straight face almost. Oh, I won the championship. <laughs> oh, my God. What in the hell, bro? As, as simple as that. Yeah, <laughs> it was a direct qualifier. Yeah. And did you know anyone who was involved in making the selection or any of the judges? There were nine judges all from overseas. Um I don't think any of them have judged anything that I'd been in before. I was, you know, super nervous about it, to be honest, because I'd, even though I'd won all these competitions in Australia, I was... was Keep in mind, Raygun is saying that she's won tons of championships in Australia for breakdancing. The lady that literally went out there and flopped on the floor like a dead fish. <laughs> Did you cheat, Raygun? <laughs> <laughs> her mouth is saying no, but her body, her body's saying yeah, baby. <laughs> I was nervous about winning this one because it was all new judges. Well, one of those judges from New Zealand um, was speaking actually in your defence uh, in explaining what had happened, and he said this. All us judges talked about how she was going to get smashed, absolutely smashed. I mean, it's fairly... <laughs> what? <laughs> One of the judges that picked her, since they were joking about how she was going to get smashed. Maybe, actually, oh, shit, P plot twist. Plot twist. They did this as a joke. They did this as a joke. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> or she smashed them. Yeah, as, uh, either or, you know. Stark, um, did you know it was going to be rough? <laughs> yeah, I knew my chances were slim. As soon as she knew that no one would understand, and she just knew that she was going to get destroyed. But also, by the way, she's won tons of championships. She won the championship qualifier, and she's the best breakdancer in Australia, by her words, uh, herself. So how does she, A, believe that she's the best, that she won tons of competitions and she won the qualifier hands down, uh, bar none. But she also knew she was going to get smashed and had no chance at winning. You can't believe the both both these things at the same time. That makes no sense. What I was going to do. So she had to go what she was good at. Well, it turns out that she's not very good at it. Uh oh, shit. You know, we had. Uh, in the judging criteria, you've got exit three, but it just wasn't enough to tip the scales. You know, uh, you tip what scale? You, what do you mean tip the scales? What do you mean tip the scale? 
she didn't even breathe on the scales. And I got to completely take away a little bit and look at this. And uh, the person that she was battling from the USA's name was Logistics. And I got to say, I've never disliked breakdancing culture more than I do now. Like, none of them have cool names. All their names are the most cringiest bullshit I've ever heard. All their names sound like a 13-year-old kid coming up with his rap name because he wants to be a rapper because he listened to one song from Eminem. Every one of them sound like that. Logistics with an X, bro. <laughs> okay, fuck. All right, it's a great name. Go with it. Roll with it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh enough to tip the scales you know the, the odds were against me <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> a lot of the breaking community seems to have fallen in behind you you want it fair and square you're one of theirs um there was however some criticism from that community i think it's fair to give you the chance to respond to it um so they for example let me uh, tell you why real quick before she gets into that the reason why a lot of the breakdancing the breakdancing community is getting behind her is because she is the most popular breakdancing figure ever. And it's not for good reason, uh, but this is how the world in 2024 works in the current stages of social media. It doesn't matter how talented you are. It only matters how embarrassing and cringe you are. That's how you get famous. Look at iShow Speed or any streamer for that matter. The way they got famous was being cringe and just blowing shit up and screaming like a child in their rooms. That's how they got famous. So you don't actually get famous for anything else. You could be the best guitar player, best pianist, the best drummer on the planet and do drum covers, guitar covers, piano covers all at the same time on your YouTube channel and you'll never grow past 100K subs unless God shines upon you. But if you catch your grandma on fire and steal a car and wreck it into a police station all on live stream, you will be famous the next day and likely get a deal from Kick or something. That's how these things work, unfortunately. So that's why the breakdancing community is standing behind her because they're going wherever the popularity is going to go. That's where they're going. Well, a quote from a breaker and a bit of a hip-hop legend in Australia called Spice, who says, I feel like it's just pushed our scene in Australia into the dark ages. <laughs> it made a mockery of the Australian scene, and I think that's... Yeah! Look at Raygun's stupid face! <laughs> Look at her smug-ass face. I'd, st I'd still hit it, though. That's definitely still hit it. There's something about her. It's my balls shaking. I don't know what it is. She probably has that weird biological thing that like clicks my biological thing where you're just like, you know what? That's why a lot <laughs> of us are hurting. In hip hop, we have this thing. You step up or you step off. You need to know your place. Is there any merit in those criticisms? Damn, that one was fucked. Oh, God, I love it. That This is the best part of the interview by far. Yeah, look, it's really... It is really um, sad to, to hear those criticisms. Um, and I am very sorry for, you know, the, the backlash that the community has experienced, but I can't control how people react. Unfortunately, we just need some more resources in Australia. <laughs> they need to stop showing this. I'm trying to listen to her and I can't. I'm like, oh, oh God. It's like watching a four-year-old take her diaper off and run around. <laughs> <laughs> but in the last year i have trained my hardest i have trained so hard learning power moves in your mid-30s is not easy <laughs> let's just say that so i have really you know put my body through it put my mind through it so you know but if that's not good enough for someone what can i say mm. Well, you're an academic and you, you write in this area. And in one of your papers, actually, you wrote about how breaking is something that emerges from marginalized communities, especially racially marginalized ones. I love this. This is going to be the best part. So this is where Rachel Raygun comes in and tells her that she she pretty much implies that uh, the, she's her point, her existence is to bring uh, breaking to people of color. Thank God, which is what every white girl says about anything. They're always a, they're always so selfless in teaching uh, <laughs> minorities <laughs> things. It's like that weird thing that like white girls love to put on dating profiles. You know that they went to Northern Africa and fed fed children and taught them English. 
and they always post pictures of it and they're like look how good i am i'm so good look at me i am have blonde hair and i'm white and i went to these countries and i gave them water out of my cupped hands and the the danger is when you turn it into a sport you can actually end up excluding those very communities now there have been some people who've noted that you know this turned into an olympic sport australia puts up a b girl and it ends up being a white woman instead of someone from those marginalized communities um do you think there is an irony there that you know what she just heard him say she probably said in her mind i am a marginalized person i'm a white lady <laughs> you know how white women are well white women think they're basically the most oppressed class of people for some reason <laughs> they like to be involved well we give them that you know we let them be involved it's fair to comment upon yeah look it's um that there's a number of white bee girls in australia actually i don't know what it is about us white as white women and being attracted to breaking so you know i think if even if it went to the second or third um that it still would have been a white bee girl representing damn I don't know, like when when the Olympics, you know, when it was announced that we had the Oceania qualifier, there was a lot of people in the scene personally reaching out to people to to get them to sign up, you know, and to, to get them involved. That's something that we're always reflecting on. How can we get more people into... I love how every single person involved in all of these qualifiers that they're showing in tandem with the audio are all better than her at breaking by the way it's hilarious breaking that's that's something that we're always thinking about to be honest right sure do you, do you genuinely think you are the best female breaker in australia well i i think my my record speaks to that you know i was the top ranked australian b girl in 2020 and damn you heard it here folks she is the best breaker in Australia. Get wrecked. Get wrecked, everybody else. She the best. She the top ranked. She the best, bruh. What you gonna do about it? Nothing. 2022 and 2023, I've been invited to represent at um, how many world championships, Paris, Korea. You know, so the record is, is there. But anything can happen in a battle you know it's always about what happens on the day that consistency shows you know my level so all right take me to that closing ceremony when all your fellow olympians got around you it was just crazy like i was feeling pretty anxious that day um you know it was a mic was it was all kind of affecting me a bit more and was way <laughs> sean yeah <laughs> are you the best nascar driver cody well i'm the best nascar driver that lives at my house <laughs> on me a bit more and i wasn't sure if i was even going to go to the closing ceremony and um it was just so nice to have the support of of all the other olympians there and and they really you know supported me they they understood you know that i went out there and i gave it my all and it wasn't just like we support you it was like you're a legend let's have fun you know let's celebrate and then someone's like do the kangaroo and, and so we were doing it i never thought that would happen like oh my gosh oh, they're just making fun of her it's so sad it's so sad <laughs> Totally wild, and the Australians were just all cheering, and that was just like so. You hear that, everybody in the chat? That's Australian. She actually, uh, Australians love her. You're lying. Like it so warmed my heart. The irony of this is that you are perhaps the most famous Olympian of the Paris 2024 Olympics. Isn't that ironic? What does he mean by that? What does he mean by that? What does that mean, Mister Guy? Look at his smug little face. He knows what he just said. Isn't it ironic that you're the most famous Olympian from the Paris Olympic Games? <laughs> Why is that ironic, Mr. Guy? Oh, it's because she sucks. Big games worldwide. I mean, is there an upside to all this? The upside is you get... No. 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 Um... 
random people contacting you that you never thought would ever notice you. <laughs> I'm going to crawl in her DMs and be like, what that booty do, girl? What's up? <laughs> I don't care how old you are. <laughs> you know, and it's not just like breakers that you've respected for, you know, a decade. It's someone like Sir Richard Branson calling you to say that. Here she he goes with her humble bragging. You ready? This billionaire called me and said I was so brave and cool. He enjoyed your performance and he thought that you, it was plucky and courageous and fun. And, you know, he would love to, you know, uh, do something with me and have me on some cruises with Boy George. <laughs> God, the humble bragging killing me today. She be humble bragging out the stratosphere. <laughs> like, what is life? I don't know. Do you think there's any more breaking in your future? I don't think I'll be competing for a while. Um, not really wanting to be in the spotlight breaking. Um, <sighs> she really just doesn't want to be in the spotlight. <laughs> She's about to just sign a $15 million uh, media deal with uh, some... Uh, reality shows but she doesn't want to be in the spotlight guys um competing um but i you know it's it's been nice like it's been a bit of a process to try and start dancing again I, like that's actually been tough you know it was my medicine and then it turned into my source of stress <laughs> so Ooh. i'm really happy that it gets to go back to being my medicine i can kind of finally feel free again so it's um yeah, I'm looking forward to, to breaking, but no, I don't think I'll compete for a while. <laughs> yeah. You speak of the positives, though, of the experience. Those positives, do you think they're the things that are, are going to pull you through? Yeah, I'll survive. Pull her through what? What is he talking about? Is she, like, hinting that she's going to offer herself? <laughs> what? I'm all right. The, the positives are just amazing. I would rather much focus on, on the positives out of this and the positive responses and the joy that I've brought people. It's going out there and just having fun and, and going as hard as you can in the face of, you know, um, losing. <laughs> like... Oh, Ray Gun.